When is the last time you ran into a Melchizedek? It's not a name you hear often, and I doubt any of us in church have ever introduced ourselves to someone and have that person say back to us, nice to meet you, my name's Melchizedek. In fact, it's very likely that the only time in our lives that we ever hear that name is when we hear the passage that was proclaimed in our first reading. It's a very ancient story. It comes from a time 2,000 years before Jesus was born. And at that time, the priest king of the city of Salem, which is the city of Jerusalem, so ancient that Jerusalem had not even received its full name yet, Melchizedek comes forth with bread and wine to offer thanksgiving with Abram. 4,000 years ago. Melchizedek represents to us because he just appears. We don't hear the story of Melchizedek, where he came from, how he became a priest of Solomon. He's just there. And he represents to us, in the life of the church, the eternal priesthood of Jesus, in which we all share in order to offer thanksgiving. At least 4,000 years ago, and a long time before that, a message in our first reading that says to us that woven very deeply into human nature itself is this recognition that we are called to give thanks. That this is a part of who we are. We recognize a need to be thankful. To whom? Well, on any given day, we can be thankful for any number of things and for different people. Principally, as we gather here, we recognize that it's woven into who we are to give thanks to God. And this is what Melchizedek represents as he brings forth bread and wine to give thanks with Abram. It's also true that on any particular day, we may not feel particularly thankful. And it's for this that we recognize in Jesus the great mercy and compassion of God. In our second reading, St. Paul, writing to another ancient community, not nearly as ancient as Abram and Melchizedek, in the Greek city of Corinth, St. Paul reminds them of the spirit of the Lord's Supper in which they are called to gather a spirit of unity and peace and not division. We continue to celebrate the Eucharist in that spirit. The first thing that we do when we gather is pray for the Lord's mercy. And as we did this morning, beat our breast in the recognition that in the church, that in our lives, that in our world, there are divisions that separate people, but that the Eucharist through the mercy and love of God in Jesus Christ, is a sacrament of unity that connects us to Jesus. Jesus, St. Paul, in the second reading says, you know, what I have handed on to you was not my own bright idea. But what I hand on to you is what I received myself. That on the night he was arrested, Jesus celebrated with his disciples, took bread and said, this is my body. And St. Paul said to the Corinthians, you are connected to this experience. When you celebrate the Lord's Supper, you are there with him, as he said on that night to his apostles, to those who are following him, this bread is my body, this cup of wine, this is my blood. And we too are connected in our celebration to that very experience. And Jesus speaks to us, committing himself to us in love. In the Gospel we hear from Luke one of the stories of the feeding miracles of Jesus. Thousands are fed. But we begin hearing that there was a crowd gathered. They had traveled some distance from surrounding towns to a deserted place to be close to Jesus. 
And the disciples begin to complain and say, Lord, dismiss them. Send them away. But they wouldn't leave. They wanted to be close to him. They wanted to be close to the Lord, and they wouldn't leave until he told them to go. They were listening to him teach about the kingdom of God. When's the last time you went to church for a Mass on Sunday and said, Father, just keep talking. <laughs> just keep going. Tell, tell us another one. <laughs> tell us more about the love of Jesus. We have no plans. We've got, got nothing going on. Just keep sharing. We don't want to go. We want to stay here. They had traveled some distance, and they wanted to be with the Lord there. And they didn't want to leave his presence until he said, you can go. There's a, a popular song. It's been around for a long time. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us have heard it. I think Bette Midler is the, the artist who, who made it famous. It's called uh, From a Distance. And we, if you're not familiar, you know the refrain at least. God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. I reflected a lot of that on that song and what it says to us about the love of God, or doesn't say. Now, it begins with this image, and we've all seen pictures of planet Earth from space. The beautiful blue water planet. And that's how that song begins, with images of how beautiful the Earth looks with its snow-capped mountains in white, blue and green. And it talks about God's beholding the earth in love and what God sees. It continues, from a distance we all have enough and no one is in need. And there are no guns, no bombs and no disease, no hungry mouths to feed. From a distance we are instruments marching in a common band playing songs of hope and peace. God is watching us from a distance. However, we also know that when you start to get a little closer, there can indeed continue to be great beauty. We took a bike ride yesterday out west on Liberty Road, uh, being careful in traffic, but once you get far enough west, the traffic kind of lightens up. And I did slow down any number of times to look around and say, wow, look at that. Just beautiful. But it's also true, as we say, that the devil is in the details. If God is just watching from a distance, what are we to do? And in the sacrament of the Eucharist, what we celebrate is that in Jesus Christ, God has closed the distance entirely. And if the devil is indeed in the details, Jesus is there too, telling the devil to take a hike. Whenever we fold our hands in prayer, we have an image of, of the distance, the distance that separates us from God in Jesus Christ. This is how far. And Jesus' offering of himself on the cross, and as we celebrate that offering in the sacrament of the Eucharist, we celebrate the distance that God is from us through the sacrament of the Eucharist. He becomes part of the very fabric of our being. He becomes part of our, our cell structure. His soul and body are given to us entirely. This was the commitment he made to his disciples. This is my body. This is my blood given for you. You will never be far from me. I will always be that close to you. St. Paul writes in another place about prayer. And he says, The Spirit of God prays within us, crying out, Abba, Daddy, Father, because we don't know how to pray as we should. But the Lord's Spirit prays within us with sighs too deep for words, with groanings that are inexpressible. This is how far away God is from us. Within our very being. 
God prays for us when we don't know how. Don't worry, I'll do it for you. That's how far God is away from us. On this celebration of the body and blood of Christ, may we be grateful for the gift of the sacrament of the Eucharist, our sacrament of thanksgiving, and for God's pledge to be with us.